business plans with all the detail that they have got inside them. You know, they've got, they waffle on about marketing strategies and IT structures and training and branding and websites and all that other good stuff. But the one thing they don't say is, does this turkey fly? Pianos always make one act silly, don't they? Yeah. Anyone here? Do you remember some pre D serenade? 50s and 60s. Old ones, new ones. Loved ones, neglected ones. Stockhausen. better out than in. <laughs> Stop that, I'll go blind, I tell you. And I would be reading this one. I still haven't found my glasses. I don't know where I put them. Anyway, so let's talk about your business plan, getting your business up and running. And if you're looking for a book to read on this very subject, there we go. Starting a Business for Dummies, Colin Barrow. Quite a useful publication. A um, bit dry, but there you go. And I'm going to talk to you now about five things. Five things that have to be there. Five, th five things, not ten. Five things. That's two, three, four, five things that have to be there. It's five things that you need in your business plan. And that is upside, downside, USP, Plan B, and Says Who. Let's start off with the first thing, the upside. What can we earn? What can we earn? And then, is it scalable? I remember talking to a studio owner, Richard Boot, from Air Studios in uh, Lyndhurst, and he said, um, The trouble with this place is, I can only sell it 365 days a year. And there you have the problem of the facility. It's not scalable. You can't reduce the price to £10 a day and sell it a million times. It doesn't work. Downside. Yes, what can we lose? What will it cost? What are all the various costs, the insurance, the staffing? These are the important questions. So now, five things. Upside, downside. Now comes number three. Your USP. Your unique selling point. Why are they going to come to you? Why you? Why not the other guy? So what's so great about you? Maybe you are not that great. So are you in a better location? Do you have a better product? Is your product exactly what the market wants? All right. Very important point. Plan B is number quattro. Plan B, very important one. Here's an example of a good plan B. Radio Caroline was a pirate radio station moored in the, uh, in the Thames estuary, more or less, or South End on Sea area, that place. And it couldn't get advertising. It had millions of listeners, but it couldn't get advertising back in the 60s for political reasons. People didn't want to be seen advertising with Radio Caroline. So until that started to kick in with customers like Queen Magazine and Gibbs SR Toothpaste, they sold Caroline T-shirts. You could join the Caroline Club. And Tony Blackburn told us all the great things about having a Caroline sticker and Caroline window stickers and all that stuff. So that was their plan B if it didn't work out and they couldn't get the advertising. A bad plan B is when a plan B is actually a plan A in disguise. I'll give you another example. A second plan A is a really bad idea because in this particular instance, it turned into a great big millstone magazine. It was about computer graphics and it launched a trade fair, which 
at Rye in Amsterdam, expensive place. That didn't do a little one somewhere. They decided to go big. And of course, that wasn't a plan B. It was a plan A in disguise. It crashed, it burned, and it all went belly up and took the whole publishing house down with it. So beware the plan B that eats. It has to be a plan B that just goes, boop, yep, do this. Okay, now comes the difficult one, says who. That's number five, says who. Says who. In other words, what proof have you got that this turkey can fly? And the best proof, well, what are you gonna do? Market surveys? Yeah. We'll talk about those in another video. We'll do one on, completely on market surveys. But right now, the best says who, the best proof you can have is your books. Have you test marketed this thing? Have you got a, like a little bit of it going yet before you start looking for investment and borrowing money and all the rest of it? So there you go. Those are your five points. Upside, downside, USP, plan B, says who? And best of all, the best says who are your books. Show a set of books that prove you can sell or whatever it is you're doing. And also to make sure you've got all five is when you know when that idiot nephew, 17, 18 years old, and he decides, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to go to college. I don't want to study. It's all boring, isn't it? I oh, know. You know, if I'd like 15,000 pounds, I want to be a mobile DJ. <sighs> Ask him for his five points. That'll keep him busy. Okay, see you on the next video. I'm now going to... I'm going to look for the lost cord. The lost guy's at the lost court. That could be the lost court. That's gotta be in here somewhere. Hello.